Okay, hello, welcome. Uh, first of all, Maja, thank you for being here. Thank you for organizing this beautiful event. Hello all. Thank to you that you come in Slovenia. I am very proud that we can uh, see so many speakers from all a lot around the world. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm very excited. It's my first time that I speak in a Congress, so if I make a mistake, then find me. Um, as you can see, my project was called the Hemp Seed Harvesting Machine Project. Uh, you might notice that it says HEMP. That doesn't correspond with HHMP, but it was made for the German market. And if you spell Hemp Seed Harvesting Machine in German, you will get hemp. As soon as I saw that, I thought, yeah, this, this is right. This should be a good thing, so let's start it. So first about me, uh, my name is Brian Hoersen-Dauften, I'm a Dutch guy living in Berlin. I studied biology in Utrecht in the Netherlands and I moved for several reasons to Berlin. Uh, last year, at the beginning of this year, I started the project uh, for the hemp seed harvester. Um, this came uh, to my work at the hemp museum as a volunteer, I got to know the, the hemp market and this possibility got thrown into my lap. Um, I started this with the, the vision of re-establishing hemp um, for the hemp seeds um, as an organic resource, an important organic resource in our society. I think that's very necessary and with a machine like this we maybe can change something there. Um, before I tell you everything about the project, I would first like to show you the video we made for it. The uh, video always says more than a thousand words, so uh, it's about six minutes, so take your time. I will explain the, the process afterwards again, so if you don't get it, don't worry. agricultural crop for mankind, but in the last few decades it was practically forgotten by society as a natural resource. But this native plant offers for its strong fibers and oily seeds a basis for, for example, building material, food, cosmetics, paper, and medicine. The fibers originate from the stem of the hemp plant. The seeds are harvested from the flower. As a fast renewable resource, the potential of industrially used hemp in the bioeconomy is huge. Hello, my name is Marian Hoesten-Dorfen. I am a Berlin living with a biologist from the Niederlanden. My leidenschaft is the Einsatz der alten Kulturpflanze an, als vielseitige Rohstoffe in die Gesellschaft weiter voranzutreiben. Und deswegen möchte ich euch gerne dieses Projekt vorstellen. In Deutschland wird nur sehr wenig industrielle Hand angebaut. Und derzeit konzentriert sich die Ernte auf die industriell nutzbare Phasen. Obwohl die Nachfrage für Handprodukte und besonders für Handsamen stetig wächst, when the ölreiche Samen hauptsächlich A simultaneous harvest of fiber and seed is very difficult because of their different maturation periods. At the time of ideal fiber quality, the seeds are not matured yet. When the seeds are mature, the fibers will be too woody. Due to this problem, the industrial agricultural farmer with current technology can only harvest one part of the plant, whereby a valuable side product, the seeds, are left unused. With this project, we can change exactly that. Together with you guys, I want to create the possibility to obtain both high quality fiber and mature seed from one single hemp field. We will develop a combined hemp harvest. Here we see the current harvesting process of hemp fibers in the Uckermark, Northern Germany. At the time of ideal fiber quality, the plants are cut and remain on the field for several days. Observations in the field and research from the Agricultural Institute in Potsdam indicate that the seeds continue maturing in the field, making it possible to harvest the seeds subsequently. For this two-step procedure, the hemp fiber factory Bukomar developed a new machine, the hemp seed harvesting machine. This hemp seed harvesting machine picks up the hemp, which lays in the field for several days, and shakes out the mature seeds in several steps. A prototype already exists, which we will reconstruct. For that, we need a new support vehicle and further module. That is the goal of this crowdfunding campaign. Together with experts, we will then build the new hemp seed harvesting machine. 
With your support, we hope to make the machine available to existing hemp farmers in September this year during the harvesting season at operating cost. With this project, you support an important technological development which promotes the regional biological cultivation of hemp. Primarily, hemp farmers will profit from this hemp seed harvesting machine because with a combined hemp harvest, the yield per acre will be substantially higher. When the regional production increases, less hemp needs to be imported at high prices, which, in turn, will lead to end consumers paying less for hemp products because they originate from regional agriculture. You support a renewable resource, which leads to a reduced exploitation of fossil resources. This way, you make a big contribution to a better environment. Everyone who supports us financially will receive the reward as a token of our appreciation. Und nun möchte ich euch gerne zeigen, wie die Handfaser und die Handsamen verarbeitet werden. Here, we see the only hemp fiber processing plant in Germany, the hemp fiber factory Uckermark. Here, several construction and insulating materials are being manufactured out of hemp fibers. Here, a look into the kitchen of Hempfood, a small burning company where the vegan bread spread Hanfu is being made out of hemp seeds. Hallo, wir machen Baustoff aus Hanf. Und ich sage Ihnen, Hanf ist der Stoff der Zukunft. Heute gilt es, die Wege zu bereiten. Und es ist zwar viel zu tun, insbesondere in der Landwirtschaft. Darum bitte ich Sie, unterstützen Sie das Hanf zusammen mit dem Maschinenprojekt von Marein. The Hemp Seed Harvesting Machine Project become part of a technological innovation which creates a sustainable basis for an economically interesting organic cultivation of industrial hemp in Germany. Warum teuer Handsamen importieren, wenn sie auch regional und biologisch angebaut werden können? Die Handsamen Erntemaschine macht es möglich. Eine Maschine, die nach der Faser erntet, die ausgereifte Handsamen erntet und somit Landwirte gleich zwei wertvolle Produkte aus einem Handwerk gewinnen lässt. Mehr Informationen findet ihr hier unten oder auf www.handernte.de. Ich bedanke mich für eure Aufmerksamkeit und freue mich auf eure Unterstützung. Thank you. So with this video we went into the campaign. Um, but first let me tell you a bit more about the process. Because by having this machine we have to change the process. I'm first going to explain to you what the old process was. Uh, the first step was that we cut the plants in the field with uh, the big yellow machine called the Blucher, which was also uh, developed uh, by the factory itself. This machine cuts the plants in parts of 60 centimeters, it has several blades, and lays the plants in a swath on the field for further retting. Normally, after two weeks, those retted um, swaths would be picked up and baled and brought into a warehouse for further processing. But during that last step, they discovered that a lot of hemp seeds just fell out and they remained on the field. And it was, yeah, that's something where you can also make some money with and we just left it there. So we needed to find a way to harvest these seeds as well. So the factory decided, or I came with the idea, to make a hemp seed harvesting machine, uh, a modified combine, which as a second step after the cutting of the plants, picks up the swath, shakes out the seeds from the stems, and then leaving the stems on the field again for further retting. But in this way, we could save still a lot of the seeds which were normally left on the field, therefore creating an extra possibility uh, for yield for the farmer. But why the extra step? This has to do in our northern climate that when we um, harvest for fiber, the seeds in the plants are almost not mature yet. So it's impossible for us to harvest them at the same time. Um, you can see it here, uh, but clearly as soon as the seeds would be ripe, the um, fibers would be too woody and not uh, in perfect condition for further processing in the fiber factory for building materials. 
So therefore, we needed to find a different way. But also, science discovered also this is the old way: the only fiber, but no seeds. And with the project, we wanted to change exactly that. But we get both uh, products from one field. Uh, there were some scientists in Potsdam who also made an experiment to see if the seeds um, really mature in the swab, and they um, found that positive. So they really saw that after several days in the sun, uh, unmature seeds on the, on the plants were maturing uh, afterwards, and pretty quickly. So that gave us the opportunity and also the basis to create this machine. So depending on the climatic conditions, we have to wait three to seven days, uh, depending on the maturity of the seeds, before we can drive in with this machine to pick up the swab and harvest the, uh, the seeds. Uh, now I would like to show you another video. This is uh, from two weeks ago, where the prototype which we could construct with the crowdfunding money is uh, is running. Here first you see the first step of the harvest with the blucher. This is the machine that cuts the plants in parts of 60 centimeters. Unfortunately, our hemp testing field was in a very bad condition. The soil is very sandy, low in nutrition. Um, we had a very, very dry season, so these plants didn't have any water for at least three weeks. So unfortunately it wasn't that nicely high as we saw yesterday in the testing field. But nevertheless it was high enough to, um, to be able to harvest. Here you can see the entire testing field, our smoking lounge in the back. Here you can see very clearly which swat it, it lays in the field. And a nice close-up of the machine I wouldn't do. I wouldn't want to be the hand in this case. And this is the machine where it's all about. This is our modified uh, combine. The yellow part which you see were the ones we could finance with the crowdfunding campaign. Here you still see a bit of the theory, this is how it's planned. And in a few seconds you can see how it will actually pick up the swath. Well, the shaking out of the seeds we cannot see unfortunately, but you can see that also again the stems will fall on the field again. So this is his maiden voyage. He didn't do it before, so it was very exciting for us as well to see it happening live. And here you see how the seeds then <coughs> get harvested from the container. Those people you see there are mainly supporters of the crowdfunding campaign. We organized a day especially for them so you could see on site what we did with their support. But when I came to the project, the machine looked like this. And they had a lot of problems with the pickup at the front, because a lot of the hemp was getting stuck into the, into the machinery. So there were a little bit of problems, uh, especially with the pickup. In the end, in the back of the machine, with the shaking, it was not a problem. So therefore, the machine needed some more funds to function properly. 
So that's how I and the Hemp Fiber Factory came together, and we decided to try something completely new and start a crowdfunding campaign and see what happens. Uh, for the people that don't know what a crowdfunding campaign is, that's um, a way of collecting money through the internet over a platform where you sell your idea to interested people and they can make the decision to support you from one euro upwards. And as a reward, uh, we offer them rewards depending on how much they support, ranging from a little bag of seeds to a personal tour in the factory um, and some other products we got from our, uh, our sponsors. Uh, the campaign was running for two months, from the 18th of May to 18th July. Uh, our goal was to get 50,000 euros, so we could also buy a new carrier vehicle and a new pickup. Uh, we had a funding threshold of 10,000 euros, meaning that as soon as we reached the 10,000, we would be uh, sure that we would receive the money. All the funds below 10,000 would have been lost if we didn't reach the time or uh, in time before the end of the of the period. But Luckily, at the 18th of July, we reached the stand of 10,000 euros, 726 euros, which meant that we made the funding threshold and we received the money. So with that money, we had enough to buy some new modules for the pickup and to rebuild the prototype we already had, so we could still continue with the development. Here are some small statistics of the campaign. We had an average of three supporters a day with 168 in total. People donated an average of 64 euros per person, with an average of 202 euros a day. And the total amount was 10,726 euros. <coughs> so what did we get from the crowdfunding campaign besides money? Because crowdfunding is not only about getting the funds needed. You have to sell your product before you actually have it, so to say. So you're starting with your marketing in front. That way we received many positive feedbacks from all around Germany and all around the world. Uh, we got many fans and supporters um, for this project. Uh, we met many new and interesting contacts, which will lead us further in the development of the machine. It also led me to stand here, for example, um, by the internet, through the crowdfunding platform and other medias. We reached a very broad audience, bringing into attention the uh, possibility of regional hemp farming, especially for fiber and for seeds in Germany, which many people, for, which for many people was a, a new thing. Um, also, a lot of farmers um, uh, contacted me that they were very interested, that they didn't know that those machineries already existed, and that made them um, well very keen to also start with the hemp. Uh, therefore, I think we improved the popularity of hemp, or regional hemp farming in general, but also the popularity of myself. The good thing is that I'm standing here in front of you talking. I wouldn't ex have expected that for a year to, uh, to be happening. But a project like this, when you put yourself in, in front of everyone, can lead to um, beautiful things. So therefore, as a concluding uh, theme, it was a very exciting adventure. It still is, and will probably be, or stay the same for a long time. Um, here's a screenshot of 40 minutes before the end. Um, I was checking it every day, so I have many of these screenshots saved. Um, it's, it's quite stressy, I can say, because it's, it's a race against time. You don't know what's happening. You can only do your limited possibilities. But it works. This is applause is for, for sponsors. <laughs> yes. Can I give it to you? So the result, this machine, where you see the yellow parts, um, are completely new, and we also did some remodeling in the in, in the back. We also did a, a, a checkup on the engine, and we also put in the patent uh, for this machine. But what's next? Of course, we're going to continue development on the machine. It's not finished yet. We still need a new carrier vehicle. There are a lot of improvements still to be made. Maybe we can also harvest leaves or buds. There are many possibilities still there. Uh, or maybe introduce a decorticator in it, I don't know, you, uh, the possibilities are, are endless, so we won't stop there. But in order to continue the development, we need uh, new farmers, new partners, new investors, and hopefully also grants from different sources in order to have enough funds to also realize this project. Uh, with this machine, we have an extra argument for farmers to grow hemp. 
because with this way they can harvest the fiber and the seed, get more yield from one hectare, and therefore it is um, economically more interesting for them to start. And hopefully we can um, get more hemp farmers in the future through this machine. Uh, besides that, we will actively support new and also existing hemp farmers in the total process of hemp farming. So ranging from the cultivation, finding the varieties, um, the good varieties for the soil, how to drill, etc. To uh, the harvest, we can supply the machines as a service company. And next to it, we can help them with the paperwork, with the licensing and everything else. And this I'm going to do together with the hemp fiber factory in Prenzlau, in Germany, with which I was working already very closely. Um, and we hope that we uh, can build this up very quickly. Here you see a last picture of the machine during the harvesting party. Um, on the um, you said it? factory uh, ground. Um, and that was it for me. So if you have any questions, then please let me know. Audience, questions? Well, well done. Yes, that's good. Thank you. Um, I'd like uh, to ask you a couple of questions. Well, the first one, um, does the shaking inside the machine affect the quality of the fibers? Because, I mean, uh, I don't know, what's the entity of the shaking? Uh, well, the shaking is not more than this. So the fibers don't really get, uh, uh, um, how do you say that, damaged by it. They just roll through it. The machine is, is, is built like that, that the fibers are actually thrown back into the machine. So to avoid that they get stuck in different kinds of machinery. Therefore, we just try to get uh, force in the, in the back direction and not in other directions in order to preserve the fiber quality. Uh, up until now, we haven't seen any damaged fibers coming out of the machine. We tried also with the longer stems. We tried because you can see it on the on, on the video. Uh, we tried it with the longer stems, but actually uh, it's not supposed to take up the longer stems because it's it's made to be the second machine after the the yellow one, the Bucher, which cuts the stems already in pieces of sixty centimeters. So that's actually the the material uh, we we started. Okay. Then I like to yeah, to ask you something about the ratios of seed loss. Um, well, first. Got some data about the machine. So, how um, what's the duration of seed loss in the machine, and then how how's about bad weather? Um, well, with the last question first, uh, with bad weather, it would be very difficult to use this machine because it's a very old one. So, I don't think you would make it on the field uh, to ride. Also, it's important for us when we harvest the seeds that we didn't have uh, rain before, because that delays the maturing time of the seed. So, we at least have to wait till it's been sunny for a few days before we can start with the machine. Um, we don't have any data yet on the seed loss or on the functionality. It's still a prototype, therefore this season we're going to uh, try to harvest as many hectares as possible in order to get this information so we can analyze it and hopefully use it to improve it or um, uh, start something new. Yeah, thank you. Audience? Yes. Yeah, um, thanks. I have a question um, because of the, the control sheet that you uh, came up with saying, saying that the fiber usually uh, tells it like uh, around 100 days and then the seed the maturation, the perfect time to harvest it is 150. And then you said like the second step is done three to seven days after the first step. So that leaves like 43 days, which are not accounted for, and I just wonder it's like how fast the maturation of the seed is going on, because like there is you know, there are 40 days missing, and I was just wondering whether there is any scientific data on the maturation of the seed. Um, yes, good question. Um, the maturation time of 150 days is calculated if the plants are still in the ground, so if they're not cut. Uh, the scientific data that we have shows that as soon as the plants are cut, the maturation time of the seeds drastically decreases. So instead of 40 days, it only needs 3 to 7 days to get a lot of maturity. We won't reach 100% maturity maybe as in the 150 days, but at least we hope to reach to 70-80% seed maturity. And as I said before, the, um, 
Institute in Potsdam made several experiments with several varieties uh, exactly on this topic, and they found out that the maturation time uh, decreases by two, three weeks if you cut the plants beforehand and leave them in the swath, and if there is enough sunshine. Some more questions? Uh, thank you for your presentation, uh, Maya. Um, have you uh, are you intending or have you thought about uh, sharing or selling the technology to uh, other organizations or farmers in other countries? Uh, yes, we'd love to. Everybody who wants to use the machine, please contact me, and we will find a way how to get this technology and idea to your local hemp farms or hemp fields. For us, it's important, as I said before, my vision is that we need to re-establish hemp as an important organic resource, and therefore, we're not here to make money, we're here to improve hemp in general. So everybody who can make use of this machine and get more hemp out of it is more than welcome uh, to use it, and we will definitely find a way how we both can be happy about it. Hi, uh, Maureen, and thanks for inspiring the talk. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, with regard to the, uh, the machine, um, I've seen quite a, one or two concepts from the US which is based on open source machine. So you said that um, this is something you want to um, get sort of, um, sort of publicized in the world of and farming or beyond. So is this something that, what, what is your um, method? I mean, is, is it an open source method? Obviously you I put a lot of money into the research for the machine, but um, is open source something that you'll be looking at and then actually finding a way to monetize in that? Um, yes, of course. Um, as said before, um, I think the machine itself, uh, if it functions the way we hope it does, um, it can pay itself off pretty good on its own, so we don't need to, to, to make the money on the technology itself, I believe. Um, I haven't looked completely into the open source background, uh, but um, I would definitely like to share it with everybody there. I don't know, we just kind of put it somewhere on the forum. We have to see about, uh, uh, about that, but um, everybody who contacts me and wants to use it um, can have it. Thank you. Maybe some word about crow farm. Crow yes. Um, yeah, crowdfunding for food is, um, as I read, is relatively new. Crowdfunding usually was done for music or movies or um, other uh, artistic things. But since two or three years, um, uh, crowdfunding has been used more and more also for startups, uh, also in the agricultural business. Uh, up until this project, I think in Germany you were like, four projects um, crowdfunded by um, uh, crowdfunding. Uh, in other countries there were a little bit more already, so I had a few examples which I could uh, take a look at before we started this campaign. Um, I can say if you want to start a crowdfunding campaign then take your time because it's much more work than you can imagine. Uh, if I look back on it, uh, we took not enough time, therefore a lot of stuff first came up when the campaign was already live. It made it a bit stressy, uh, but nevertheless, uh, we managed through. Um, but uh, in that case, if you need also help with crowdfunding, you can also contact me. We had a lot of experience already in the last six months. Uh, but I think it's a very good way, especially if you are completely unknown, if you have a good, strong product which you can give to your uh, supporters. Um, it's a beautiful way to see if your idea is, is good already before you put yourself into, into debt at a bank or an investor or something else because you first have to sell it, then you get the money and then you are actually in the game already. But if it doesn't work, then you did a lot of work but you didn't lose the money already. So in that sense, I can recommend crowdfunding for, for a lot of people who are starting the, uh, with their business. I got a very good feedback, especially from him. A lot of people are interested, so you have a good possibility to get a lot of media attention or social media attention because the topic is hot. Are you satisfied with money? Or? Well, of course, I rather had the 50,000 euros uh, or, or even more, but uh, yes, we're satisfied that we reached at least this, uh, this limit. 
uh, through the contacts we made. Uh, I'm, I'm positive, I'm very sure that by 2016 we have a completely new uh, machine, so hopefully not a prototype anymore, but just a functional one, which we can also share with the world. Uh, but for that we now have 12 months, uh, a lot of preparation work has been done already. So, to conclude, I am very, very happy with the result. It could have been better, but that's life. Thank you very much. I hope that we will see next year this machine here in Chicago. So, if anybody can touch this and the results of this year's harvest. Thank you very much. Thank you.